Okay. So what I will say, I'll mention um, if people want to mute themselves and then when we get like, we'll kind of go through some different sections of, of information and then we'll kind of do Q and A's at the end of each one. So then you'll be able to unmute yourself just to reduce background noise. All right. So we're at 702, I say let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I thought first we would just do kind of quick introduction of, of ourselves and say like how this even happened. <laughs> so um, oh, you got so pulled I'm, into it, it's better. <laughs> right, yeah. So I'm Julie yeah. Schulberg <laughs> and I'm a member like the majority of you in the Scottsdale Girlfriends uh, Facebook group. And um, somebody put on there that they wanted to organize a golf league for women. And so I was like, oh, my husband is a golf professional. Just let her know that um, he could help organize if she was interested. And she said, sure. So that's Eric. Eric is my husband. Um, so connected them. And then things just changed with her life. And so she um, wasn't able to continue to help with the organizing. So now we're, we're doing it and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's fun to get to know everybody. We've been up in Prescott Valley for the past three years um, and we're transitioning down to Scottsdale. Eric has been kind of splitting his time between the two and it was just getting to be too much travel. So we're moving down here full time. Um, yeah, in the process of selling our house. So we have a lot going on. <laughs> So if I seem a little bit scattered in emails and whatever, that's why things, things should kind of settle down here soon. Um, do you want to say anything about yourself, Eric, like your background with golf? And Sure. Um, so my name's Eric Schulberg. I've been involved in golf. I started playing golf when I was about five, but played professionally when I was younger for a little bit and then have been teaching for over 20 years. Um, but you know, I think the reason Julie reached out um, when she saw that the league was because I've always tried to help women in golf a lot because I've always oh. had, um, I, I, I wouldn't say it's just women. anywhere I find in life where there's um, stigmatism that are wrong, I, I fight for those people. <laughs> so I, and I feel like in golf, there's been this thing about women where they play slow or something like this. And a lot of women won't go play golf once a year, like men will, because they're worried about what people will say or whatever. And I, you know, so it's always been um, something I fought for and I thought this would be, and I've done stuff before with them just educating um, women, how they can go play and executive women, how they can go play with people. I'll talk more about that in a second. So for me, I'm just, I'm so excited. This is growing with so many new golfers. I just, I love, I love seeing it. It's been fun. I've done a lot of lessons already with a lot of people. It's just, it's been fun meeting all of you guys. So I, this is going to be a fun, fun group. And I'm glad you guys are, have joined. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this league. That's, it's neat. So. All right. Great. What about me. Yep. All right. So um, to kind of get into information, uh, really like, we really do feel like anybody, everyone should be able to, to play golf. Um, it's something that is enjoyable. You don't have to wait until you're really, really good to be able to play with people. Um, and I am, I still consider myself a beginner. So I've only been playing for the past three years or so. Um, well, I guess four, four years. We started a little bit before we moved uh, up to Prescott. But, um, and I haven't really played with anybody besides Eric. And so I'm really excited to be able to play with all of you um, and just ha have a really inclusive environment where it doesn't matter your skill level. And in seeing the surveys come in, I'm really excited about, like we have people across the gamut of experience and uh, how they feel about their ability playing golf. So I'm excited for that, that we'll have some people who are more experienced who can help. Um, I don't want to say help beginners, but like uh, help beginners, <laughs> including me. 
um, and just kind of learning the ropes because a lot of a lot of golf is kind of observation um, and learning from other people. There's so many like little intricate things about it that you don't want to study it and wait until you know it all to go out on the course. So just us being able to get out there and start playing. I'm really excited for next Wednesday. Um, okay, so kind of getting into uh, how the league is going to be set up. So the sign up for the next couple of months is up on um, you schedule. And so I'm gonna share my screen and just show you guys how uh, how to get there because I know there have been some questions about how to sign up. So I thought the website is a little bit overwhelming at first, not necessarily knowing um, how to do things. So I thought I would just do a quick demonstration and then in the email that will be sent out that has the recording of this call, I'll also include instructions on how to do this so you don't have to remember because I know for myself, if I'm only doing something once a month, chances are I'm gonna forget the next time that I, that I have to do it. So first thing you do is log in. So always be sure to log in, because um, if you don't, it'll not save what you're doing and you'll have to log in and then do it all again. So when you first log in, it's gonna show your appointment. So it shows me that I have um, the leagues already set up for play for my appointments or as you schedule your lessons with Eric, this is where it will show up. So to actually sign up for the play days, you'll go to book clinic. And then right now, the clinic that we're offering is the Scottsdale Girlfriends Golf League. So you may see other things pop up as we add things to what Eric is offering. So you just wanna make sure that you look for the right uh, name and then you click dates and locations. And then here it has the dates for the next couple of days or a couple of months, I mean. And so basically like as the one on Wednesday falls off, Wednesday, February 16th, there's gonna be the one for April, the Wednesday for April that'll come up. So it'll always be a couple of months ahead um, in terms of being able to register and, and see those dates. Um, so then you just click on details and registration. And right now, mine's not gonna show because it shows that I'm already signed up for the event, but normally at the bottom, it would say, are you wanting to sign up for yourself or are you signing up for somebody else? And then you just click that you want to book it, it'll add it to your cart, and then you go through the payment process, okay? So fairly simple once you know that you just need to go to book clinic. That's, that's kind of the key, is knowing where to start at the beginning. Um, and then for those of you who haven't booked your free lesson yet, or if you're wanting to book an additional lesson with Eric, you'll just click the book lesson at the top. And then here you'll see a drop down for choose payment type. So when you have one free lesson, it'll show here. And then you're able to look at the calendar, figure out what day it is that you wanna look at, what availability there is on that day. Um, and when you select the time you want, you click book lesson. I'm not gonna do that because it'll take away my free lesson. <laughs> yeah. I think you can still get it. <laughs> I, I have a feeling, um, uh, but it'll, it'll just take you to a confirmation page and then uh, you'll get a confirmation email. So if you ever are not receiving a confirmation for anything that you're doing, it means that it hasn't gone through. So feel free to reach out if you're having difficulty um, and I can send you instructions on how to do it. So um, yeah, so there is that. I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen, maybe. Oh, there's the stop share. Okay. <laughs> I always know how to do this stuff until I'm doing it in front of people or like for an mm. actual call. Um, okay. Why is this not? Oh, because that. Okay. There we go. Um, okay. So um, sign up ends three days before the event. So for the 16th on Wednesday, like basically the cutoff is going to be uh, the Sunday before. And once we have that cut off, then there are no refunds. 
Uh, so you want to make sure that you're kind of locked in um, before by that that three days before. Um, if you are wanting club rentals, oh, I forgot that's something else to show. So club rentals are going to be thirty dollars. We were able to get a, a better price than what they offer at the um, course itself. Um, so for club rentals, that is something that you'll do through the website as well. Um, and you can do club rentals for lessons or for the, the play days. And that's going to be under buy products. So just like where you went in for the membership, that's where you go and there's a club rental there. Do you guys want to see that? Or do you feel like I'll show it. I guess I'll show it. It, it doesn't hurt to we don't have a ton of information to go over, so we'll go ahead and do. Okay, so here by products. Here is club rental. So then you'll just um, click the buy button for one rental, enter the payment information. I think there's a section. I'm like, I get a little nervous. That some, okay. Uh, is there a place for? Okay. So there isn't a specific place for notes. We'll have to see if there's some, some way to do that, just so that we know what it is for. I mean, we can see what you're signed up for, but just to make it clear, we'll see. So right now, I guess I would say email me so that we can make sure that we're applying the club rental to, to the appropriate um, either lesson or play day, um, but that's where you would go to rent clubs. Okay. Um, so with the club rental, it is something that will need to be done um, ahead of time because the, the golf shop, like we're gonna be taking care of payment and everything. The golf shop, number one, isn't gonna be able to give you the deal that we're able to give you. Um, it does need to come through us. So, um, like signing up anything that has to do with the league does need to come through us and we'll be coordinating with the, with the pro shop to make sure everything is taken care of and paid for. Um, but ba basically, Julia, like, look, there's nothing you will be able to do. You know, if it's a day before and you're like, oh, my schedule cleared up, I want to go play. It, it won't, they won't be able to just spit you in because they won't. It's what I told them three days before and that's going to stick. Now, if you want to let us know maybe something happened, then we can see what we can do to try to make that happen. But you can't show up and ask the golf shop to do it because they'll just say no, because that's how this program is set up with them. Um, yeah, and so along with that, uh, like we really want everybody to get to know other people within the group. So we aren't gonna be doing specific pairings. Um, so we're just gonna try to rotate who plays with who every time. So you're playing with new people, meeting new people, because um, that's part of this whole thing is like being social and getting to know others. Um, okay, last thing that I want to talk about before uh, Eric kind of takes over is about uh, tea times for this next Wednesday. So we have scheduled those tea times. The first tea time is going to be at 3.30. And the tea times are going to be every eight minutes after that. So we will be sending out pairings the day before uh, the play day happens. So like on Wednesday, we'll send out the pairings on Tuesday. Um, so you'll know who you're playing with, what your tea time is, and then all of that will also be taken care of at the golf course. And this is gonna lead Eric into what to do once you get to the golf course during the play days. Okay, all right, great. So what I'm trying to do is make this very simple for you guys so you feel comfortable when you get there. You don't have to go into the golf shop. You don't have to ask questions. So I've tried to set this up with them. So it's going to be really easy when you get there so you feel comfortable. So basically, you'll just park and you get there. When you get there, they're going to have, you're going to already know your tee times, but they'll also have something on the carts on the front that'll say, I'd probably just SGL. They'll probably put it on there. And they'll probably put your name too for the pairing with it. So you'll know that's where you put your bag. And then you'll just tell whoever the cart attendant or whoever the person is there near the bag, 
bags that I'm playing with the Scottsdale Girlfriends League today, and they'll they'll know what that is um, that you're doing. Um, but like I said, there the carts will be kind of separate. Um, and they will have a tag on the front of them saying what this is. And it should have your name on it, or if it doesn't have name, it'll at least have your time on it that you're going. So if you're 338, you'll know that's your cart to, to put your bag on, and maybe they'll, they'll help you put it on it. Um, you do get range balls with it. If you want to hit range balls first, just playing accordingly on time. Um, there's a little window you'll see when you get there. Um, where you kind of put your right by the bag drop. And if you walk up a little bit, you'll see a little window and you just tell the guys, um, I need um, some balls. Um, I'm going to go to the range. I'm with the Scottsdale Girlfriends League and they'll just give you a small bucket of balls. So just plan however much time you need to get there early, if that's the case, um, that you want to do that. Um, besides that, you're going to have as far as the course you're going on, there's going to be people out there are going to direct you. I'm going to be there for the first one at least. I think Julie's going to be there Sunday. So to help make sure you go the right, get started on the right way. Um, the carts all have GPS on it, kind of help you get around. You'll be able to see where, where you're going. Um, so it should be, um, shouldn't have a ton of questions asked. It should be hopefully pretty straightforward. Um, we are going to do... Um, have try to have some more fun at the beginning by doing scrambles with the groups. So uh, for those of you who don't know what a scramble is, all, all of you will tee off. If there's four people in your group, some will probably have three or there may be one with three, but all, if there's four in a group, all four of you tee off and then you find the best shot, whichever one you thought was the best tee shot. And then you all hit from there. Okay. And then after you all hit from that shot, you find the next best one. And then do that same thing all the way till it's in the hole. Okay. So that's, that's a scramble. They're really fun. If you haven't played them before, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. And, and I'll get into, well, I guess I'm going to work right into it right now with pace of play. And we're going to open this up to questions. If some, if I'm going over something too quick, but so pace of play, this is one of the things um, why I feel anybody can play golf at any point. If you've never even played, you can go. And this is why. Because if you take a par four and a par four, the way they figure out par fours, let's say, it means you should hit two shots to get on the green and then two putt. That would be like the ideal world. Okay, a par five, it should take three shots to get there and then two putts. Par three is one on the green and two putts. That's how they kind of figure out what a par is for a hole. So let's say you look at the scorecard and you go, this hole's a par four and you're playing by yourself or or in this group and you, you note it. I would just say this, you can take five shots or six shots. And let's say you're brand new, you miss it four times. Well, that's four of your shots. So don't stand there and hit four from the same place. Maybe take a shot or from the tee shot and let's say you miss it. Maybe try another one and then pick it up. And then maybe, and this is more if you're playing with other people, then drop it somewhere else, like up further, maybe all the way up at the green and work on your chipping and then putting but you'll never hold anybody up if you always keep in, your, keep in your mind that you can take at least one more stroke over what the par is of the hole. So a par five, you get six, you can take six attempts and you'll always keep up with anybody, whether you're, whether you're a professional or not. And you'll also gain a lot of from people that are good players and what that you're playing with. They'll be really amazed that you know how to get around the course that well by doing that and that you're respectful in that sense. Plus, I think you know, what happens is if you're struggling as a beginner and it, it's taking you 10 shots in a hole, you're going to get frustrated. It's not going to be fun. And you know people are going to be kind of getting behind you. You guys aren't going to have that bad of an – it's not going to be that hard for you guys. I don't think there's going to be much people behind you, but we still have to get done with all the eight groups, especially now with it getting dark. Because if we have enough groups going out, the 430 group will be coming up right against dark. So that will eventually end. but. Um, I'll go over that more later. We, you can ask questions if that doesn't make sense, but basically one shot over par, you can take that many shots at it and you'll always keep up. Um, and I taught that to Julie at the beginning and, you know, I've talked to a lot of different people and it, they just, they love how it works. Um, it helps you keep up now. Um, just so you feel comfortable with when you finish your round guys that work there will come up or well I think it is all guys there I was gonna say girls too but I think it's all guys they'll come up and they'll start cleaning your clubs 
So when they're, they're, they expect a tip when you do that. If you don't want to tip them at all, say, I'm fine. Okay. When they start cleaning your clubs, I don't, you know, I don't just say I'm fine. And they they'll know, they'll know what you're talking about. If you want to tip them for cleaning your clubs, I would say give them anywhere from three to five bucks. Okay. But don't, I mean, just, they would be, they would rather appreciate uh, you saying something just like when you see them start scrubbing them, like with a towel, just go, I'm fine. And they'll be like, oh, okay. And then they'll move over to the other bag. They won't take offense to it or anything. So just that way you'll know. Um, and that's the only, you don't have to do any worry about any tipping before if some guy helps you put your, your bag on it um, at, that, at that course. Different courses are different, but at that one, you don't have to worry about it. It'll just be at the end when you finish. So you, you can prepare for that by throwing a few bucks or whatever in your bag if you want to have them do that or whatever. Um, so I think that's it in my little section, Julie. Yeah, so that really you is- want me to cover gloves? First... Oh, no, we can do Q&A or what do you want to do? Yeah, I think we'll do a first section of Q&A. You're going to do a tire. This first... After this first section of Q&A, we'll do a little bit more about beginners. So talking about clubs, talking about um, like attire, gloves, shoes, those types of things, and then some etiquette. So if you want to stay on, great. If you don't, great. That's fine too. Um, we just want to make sure that like we've had some different questions come in. So we want to make sure that we're uh, kind of answering all of those at once instead of having to send out emails uh, and it's just easier in this kind of format rather than having you guys read uh, long, long emails because I've already sent out enough long, long emails. <laughs> so, um, so does anybody have questions so far about like how the league works, about what to expect with playing for these first couple of times in a scramble? Um, anybody have any questions so far? Sorry, I haven't had a chance to look at the schedule yet. Is it every two weeks? Is that how it's come? Is it like Wednesday and then uh, you skip a week and, and then, then Sunday? And then Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, like for this first month, the 16th is a Wednesday. Um, and then the 20, the 26th, I think it ends up being like 10 days apart um, from the Wednesday to the Sunday. And then it's a little bit longer for us to get back to the Wednesday. So, the 16th, which is a Wednesday, and then the 26th, which is a Sunday. Is that right? 27th, maybe. The, yeah, the 27th, which is a Sunday. And then in March, it's the same date. So the 16th, of, uh, which is a Wednesday, and then the 27th, it's a Sunday. And then I think it's like April 6th, 6 plus 7, 13th, April 13th, um, and so on. So yeah, it's every other week. Um, it can be a little bit confusing to look at it, but uh, I can send out the dates again. I'll write that down to include that in the recap that I send out with the video of this. And I mean, I, I would say there's one thing too, that if there's ever like, you know, a thing where you feel like people want to do it more often than that, just let us know. And I mean, there can be changes to be made, but you know, that's just kind of how we started with, but if, if you were out there playing and you start, a lot of you are talking like, man, I wish we did this weekly. Um, you know, Wednesday, Sunday, then Wednesday, Sunday. So, you know, just come to us with it. We can, we can make changes, especially when we're doing it at that time um, to add in. So if there's ever anything like that comes up, let us know. Any other questions for this first section? What do you anticipate the, um, the timing to be for the nine holes do, do you have any idea at this point of course scramble usually plays faster but yeah so i mean typically i mean i hope you guys get done in two hours and 15 minutes tops two hours would be better but if you play at proper pace it should be two hours to two hours 15 yeah the, uh, the carts with the GPS there, they actually have a thing on it that'll show you where you are with pace. And they base it all on base close to 15 minutes a hole. I think they drop it down a bit for the par threes and up a bit for a par five. So you actually can look at it and see how you're doing. But a good general thumb rule of thumb is this. This is totally general because some things can change. But if you have groups back to back to back to back, you just need to keep up with the group in front of you typically. 
Okay. Be ready to go. When they, when they hit their second shot, you should be ready to tee off. You should always be right behind them, ready for the next one. So that's kind of a, a general rule of thumb. Any other questions? Hello. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, move on to the next section. So this really is all you, Eric. <laughs> oh, I'm not, so, I'm not uh, you doing a tire, not me. Okay. Oh, I can talk about a tire, that's fine. She's on, she's on the Zoom call right um, now. Okay. So do you want me to start with a tire or do you want to start with clubs? You just do the tire real quick, then I can end with uh, okay. the etiquette stuff. Yeah. So a tire at McCormick Ranch is a little more, uh, I would say, lenient than maybe other places. So if you look it up on their website, it says their dress code is resort casual. So they say collared shirts are recommended. Please refrain from wearing denim, cutoffs, and any footwear that will damage the putting greens. Um, so that's a little bit different because there are some places that like do require collared shirts, some places that don't want leggings um, and things like that. So right. typically, if you can buy it at um, PGA Superstore, you're good. <laughs> that's, that's my rule of thumb. Um, and then I would say I don't too, if you're, if you're a beginner, if, you're, if you do not have golf shoes, like if you have tennis shoes that you walk in or some kind of athletic shoe like that, and you, you don't have to run out and buy shoes right away. I mean, if you want to wear just some kind of athletic tennis shoe, you'll be fine in that too. Um, and had some questions about gloves. So you want your do non-dominant hand to be the glove that you're buying. So for me, I'm right-handed. So I buy left-handed gloves. And you just want it to be tight, um, not too tight, so it's uncomfortable, but you don't want it moving around. You're wanting it to be pretty snug to your, so it's like a, another layer of skin. Um, so it's not moving around and shaping you as you're using it um, for the clubs. But just remember your non-dominant hand, and it gets kind of confusing sometimes looking at it like, this is saying left-handed, but I'm right-handed, or whatever you want the non-dominant hand. Um, yeah, so that's all we have for attire, gloves and shoes. So Eric, clubs. Okay. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna just talk a little bit about clubs um, for those of you that are aware of it and then some etiquette that will help you get along with anybody when you play. Um, so clubs, I guess, you know, we got to couple of questions of like, what is the difference between them all? So obviously you want to tee off most of the time with your driver, right? And then just in general, from your sand wedge down to, a, then it goes pitching wedge, nine iron, eight, your five iron is going to go longer than your sand wedge. You know, five iron will go longer than six iron. Six iron, so you'll get more height with the lower club numbers, meaning seven, eight, nine wedge than you would with a five or so, but you want to just tee off with your driver. Um, I feel like that takes a little while to figure out distances, especially if you're rusty on what, what you need. But um, I would say it'll, it'll come over time. But if you have more questions, you can ask me about what clubs to use if you, if you need help. And also, if you need help with, if you don't have clubs, let me know. I can help you. Um, you know, I'm, I, I do fittings for Titleist, so I could help you with that or at least point you in the right direction of where to go if you want to, if you want to just get used clubs or something like that, too. I, I can help you with that although they're harder to find these days um, than they were in the past. Um, so uh, etiquette wise, there's some that are just super big. And this is, I'll say that this one's really huge is there's two I, that are really big. One of them is don't talk when the other place, person's hitting. Okay, just be quiet or go over to the side if you're chatting, just keep it down. Some people get really, like me, I, I, I go play and there are people are like, Think it's crazy I, I don't care about it I, it doesn't bother me you can do anything <laughs> I, really, I really don't care I can get in a little zone and don't I don't worry about it but some people are really really um, anal about it so I would just say a general rule if somebody's hitting be quiet um, and then the other this is the other huge one that will make people like you or not and I'm talking about playing with anybody is never walk in anybody's putting line 
meaning um, where their ball is going to roll to the hole. Don't walk over that before. So if your ball is over here in the corner, then walk around it to get to your ball. Okay. So never walk in their line of how they're going to put it. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Or I need, okay, good. A lot of head shakes. So those are, I'd say off the top, those are the two big things that if you get those right, people will respect you playing with them. Um, and they'll at least know you're trying. Um, so you gotta be, think, think about this when you, if you're playing and you're, you put your ball and it's in, but three people haven't finished and they have all marked their ball. Um, and that brings up another one. You have to look where their ball is marked before you go pick up your ball because you don't want to step on your li their line while you go to get your ball out. You may have to maneuver around it a little bit. Um, and then the other thing about that is, is, I'll say this, is some people mark their ball in the green, some don't. Um, that's your call, okay? But you, you can ask somebody, somebody if it bothers them if you want. Um, but I don't feel like you have to mark your ball. You can leave it there. A mark can be a quarter, a penny, anything that's kind of flat like that. Um, if they need it moved out of their line, they'll tell you how to move it. Anybody will tell you how to move it. But as far as what you put behind there, you just a little, a little coin of some kind that's kind of flat behind, behind your ball and then you pick your ball up. Um, so repairing the ground you play on. The carts will all have, if you take a divot, means a chunk of grass out of the ground when you hit the ball. The carts all have these little, I don't know what you call them, pl plastic funnels on the back, some kind of tube or whatever. It has the seed and sand mixed in it. You just put that in where the, where the turf is that you took out. You just kind of fill that hole real quick. And then if you take um, a divot on the green, meaning a little chunk out of, the, of where a depression of where your ball hit, then you'll just put your T under it and lift it up. Or some people have ball repair markers and you just kind of work your way around that mark and pull it up. So you put it back to how it was when you got there. And you'll, you know, a lot of McCormick is pretty good. You'll go to some courses, you'll look at it and you'll see people don't do a great job of it, but, and it's not fun when you have to put through that stuff. So I always try to get mine and try to pick up a couple more because people just leave them and it's, it's not fun when you have to put through it. So I just try to think of repair the ground that you play on. Um, cell phones, uh, I would just turn them off. If your people know you're golfing, that's what you're doing right then. Unless there's some emergency, then what I would do if you got someone that you're worried about that may call you, you have to be available for them. Put it on vibration and put it in your pocket somehow or somehow to get that because um, phones are not, not a good thing. And you'll see all these things I'm telling you, you'll see people on their phone doing it. I mean, you'll see people, and but a lot of people will not appreciate them doing that, playing with them. So these are things that people appreciate. Um, I would never drive your cart up within probably 30 yards of the, of the green. So you can drive on the fairways, but when you get within 30 yards of the green, go over to the cart path. Okay, so what's, what's good about this group is that there is a mixture of people that have played and some that haven't. So even Julie says she's a beginner, yeah, but she's played with me enough that she'll know how to at least get around there and do that kind of stuff. So that, that's when that's, that's a big thing. And like I said, that's another thing. You'll see people do it, but it's not a good thing to do. Um, I, I would just say, you know, the little note of do the little things, observe, observe what people are doing, especially if you're with somebody that plays golf a lot, you know, kind of observe what they do. And then some, somehow this is a way you can help. Let's say, let's say you hit a wedge or let's say you're, you have a wedge and a putter in your hand and you carry it to the green um, and you put your wedge down because you're going to putt, right? Um so another play in your group, what they could do would be really nice if they finished before you or whatever, grab your putter and hand it to you so you can just walk off instead of having to grab it. So you could say, oh, hey, I got your putter, and then they can grab it while they're walking off the green. So it's just kind of looking out for other people and helping people move along faster if you see that happening. Um, and the other thing today is this, pins, because it, everything changed kind of with COVID and in 2019 when they came out with new rules. You don't ever have to pull the pin out to putt. Okay. Anymore. I, 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 I would just leave it in, but if you play with somebody that wants it out, you know, I guess you, you gotta take it out. I mean, that's, that's what they want. Cause they still can ask for it. 
but you're welcome to play the every round and putt right into it. They've done a lot of studies on it and actually people do better with it in than with it out. <laughs> so it always blows me away that people still take it out, but I think it's more of a mental thing. They don't feel comfortable when they grew up 30 years playing with no pin in there. And now they're looking at it. It's, I think it's just an uncomfortable factor for them. So it's more of that than anything else. So, but you can just leave it in. And if somebody in your group, and that's another thing you can say is when somebody else is funny, do you want the pin out? Or you could add, what I usually do is find out on the first hole. What do you guys like to do? You know, so you guys will probably be in a lot of agreement just to just keep it in unless somebody says something different the whole time. Um, those are really the major ones that will allow you to go play with anybody any day, um, anytime. And you'll have a lot of happy people with you. So right. any, any questions with etiquette or anything like that? what you should do or can't do or anything like that. Okay. So there may th be things that come up after the first round that you're like, oh, some of these things came up, let us know. And then I can help you out if it's an etiquette question or anything like that. You're like, oh, that's a lot of things do come out when you come up when you're out there, you'll notice something. So feel free to reach out to us. That's why we're here doing this, you know, so email us or whatever, and we can kind of walk you through it or whatever. And um, if anybody's interested in eventually, like I said, Julie and I will at least be there for the first couple um, to make sure things gets going. Okay. But I think eventually we would um, maybe like somebody to take over the, you know, tea times if they want, like we'll give them the tea times and they put the, the groups together. So if anybody's interested in that ever, um, yeah, let us know. This is kind of a silly question, but are we doing like the first nine on the Wednesday and then doing the back nine on the Sunday? Are we yeah, switching so off we're not going to have it's it's kind of what they have available. So that would be ideal if we can do that when I talk to him. So hopefully um, that we get to switch so you can see two different sides. The great thing about that golf course is either way, you come back to the clubhouse after nine, so you're good. Um, there may be times that there's a tournament going off that you guys will go off on the 10th hole, okay? So it just depends what's going on on the golf course that day. Yeah, so they do have two different courses. So that does give like four different opportunities of where, uh, where we can start. So it's like Eric said, it just depends on what they have going on with the course, but we'll try to, make sure that it's uh if we can help it that it isn't the same um the same thing every time or at least like two times in a row kind of break it up yep and so this is how little i knew about golf i can't how how long had we like so we watch golf oh the fins <laughs> all the time and whatever and um eric said something one time we were watching a tournament and he said something about how they changed the pins or changed the holes and I was like no they don't <laughs> <laughs> they change them every day right so that was something that I learned so like there's no question that I haven't probably asked <laughs> or a little bit that I learned and was a little bit embarrassed by so and, that's, and that's where it, I'm coming from <laughs> if anybody's on here wondering about because I know Julie brought up um, rentals for a lesson. If anybody's new here, I do, you don't need, and you don't have clubs, you don't need to have a club for a lesson to come to me. I have um, like a couple of women's clubs, so you don't have to pay for a rental just the first time or whatever, just to see, um, or just to come for the lesson. So don't feel like you have to rent clubs to sign up for a lesson with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call out. Yeah, and really even so for much. playing. Oh, say that again. Thank again. you so much for putting this together. I really appreciate oh, it. Because I know it's a lot of work Adriana. for you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Adriana. Yeah. It's fun. Um, yeah. And it's just something that, like, as a beginner, you don't need a full set of clubs uh, because you don't have enough um, skill to take advantage of the purpose of the different clubs. So you have different clubs to go different distances. And like for a long time, I really just used like my driver and my my seven iron or my six iron 
um, hybrid because that and then like my wedge and my putter because it didn't matter I hit everything the same distance <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it takes a little bit of time to to get those distances down so uh, at at your free lesson with Eric if you have questions about clubs and that type of thing um, he can answer them then or kind of as we move through the year uh, can answer like he said so any other questions All right, well, we didn't want to keep this too long because uh, we know that you all have things to do. Uh, so thanks so much for number one, signing up. We're excited. Number two, for coming on the call today. Um, and if you do have any questions that we didn't address, let us know, but um, I'll be sending out the recap and uh, we'll have some additional information there just of what we've talked about today. So. Yeah, we're, look, we're looking forward to things. And I know that Eric has really enjoyed um, doing lessons with those of you who have already been able to sign up and take advantage of that. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a great year. Yeah, thank you everybody. It's been fun, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank have you. a good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Good night. Bye night. everybody.